Hello everybody, this is SaberRex coming to you live with another review for the Beasts of the Mesozoic Ceratopsian series by David Silva and Creative Beast Studio. And today we are going to be looking at the 118th scale Zuni Ceratops Christopher Eye. Hey, so here we are. There it is. And before we take a look at this figure, let's take a quick look at the packaging for it, shall we? So here we have the packaging for Zuni Ceratops. As you can see, it's got some beautiful artwork on there. Inside you can see the diorama that can be taken out and placed behind the figure if you want to display it that way. And on the back, you of course have the list of Ceratopsians in the lineup up for wave one. And of course, there's this piece of information on the back. Now, just like with the Styracosaurus, which I reviewed last week, the art is by Jax Jackson and Carlo Arellano. And they, yeah, again, as I've said before, um, different artists had contributed to the artwork for the packaging for this. And inside the packaging, of course, you get this wonderful card, which has the same information as on the back. <laughs> and of course, in addition to that, you get this set of instructions that comes with all the Beasts of the Mesozoic figures. Now, with all of these figures, uh, you do have to heat up the tail by uh, dipping it in hot water or by um, hitting it with a blow dryer for like half a minute uh, to soften up the plastic on the tail so it will fit on the dumbbell joint uh, inside the base of the hips. Um, otherwise it's not going to get on there. Um, you're you're going to have frustrations trying to force it on and you might potentially even break the dumbbell joint if you do not uh, heat up the tail. So that's very important. Make sure you do that and uh, you will have no problems. So, let's move on to the figure itself. So here we have Zuni Ceratops, and yeah, it is just gorgeous. Um, Zuni Ceratops is absolutely one of my favorite uh, Ceratopsian genre. It is one of the earliest um, true Ceratopsids, or rather it is the um, one of the creatures that transition from the more primitive ceratopsians like protoceratops into the more advanced forms like um, styracosaurus and triceratops and pachyrhinosaurus and yeah it's absolutely fantastic now um, this figure is absolutely um, amazing in regards to its color scheme it's color scheme, like all the Beasts of the Mesozoic uh, figures, is based off that of lizards and frogs, and in this case, the inspiration for the color scheme is a lizard from the American West called a five-lined skink. And I have to say, it, it fits this dinosaur so perfectly. I mean, the orange on the frill, the blue on the tail, coupled with the stripes on the back, and the white underbelly with the dark brown here and on the hips along with this blue along the frill it just works so perfectly with it just absolutely amazing and it, it just gives a very stark beautiful design that just makes it look so realistic and lifelike I mean we don't know the color scheme for Zuni Ceratops but um, I, I really cannot imagine Zuni Ceratops not looking like this as a result. It, it, it's just too beautiful. <sighs> and, um, yeah, just like Styracosaurus, which I reviewed last week, its color scheme is, again, based on a lizard. Um, I had said uh, previously that Styracosaurus, um, its color scheme was based off a frog, but it's actually based off a common green forest lizard, not the strawberry poison dart frog. 
I got that a little mixed up uh, because of the fact that there are several frog based ceratopsian color schemes in the toy line such as those of Regala ceratops, Chasmosaurus, and Pentaceratops which I will be reviewing in later videos. But uh, yeah, now I, I remember heard which one is which and uh, yeah, not going to be making that mistake again. Now, articulation-wise, this figure has about 19 points of different and uh, 19 different points of articulation, and uh, yeah, the head is on a mixture of dumbbell and uh, ball joints, so it can move left, it can move right, it can go down, it can go up like this. The jaw does move um, like so, just like that. There is no tongue joint in this because of its small size. This is actually the smallest of the 118th scale ceratopsians. And, um, yeah. Yeah, comparatively, yeah, it is to scale with things like the Styracosaurus and the Triceratops, things like that. Now, the shoulders and the elbows do move, like so. They move about to a 90 degree angle at the elbow. It can straighten out about this much. The joints are pretty tight on this figure. Uh, the wrist is on a ball joint and it can swivel like so. And both legs are capable of doing this, just so you know. Um, the shoulder can move around a full 360. I don't recommend doing that too much because of the clearance issues with the shoulder, but it is possible. The same is also true for the hind legs, which can also rotate a full 360. Um, the knee can also move forward about that much um, and about this far back. So you get a nice range of movement there. The ankle can pivot. It's a very tight joint, um, but it is, yeah, it can move back about that much. It can move forward about this much. Uh, the feet are on swivel joints. They can move about this much this way, and they can tilt like so, and that's for both feet. So you do get a nice range of motion in there. Uh, the tail is also, of course, on a ball joint. It only moves at the base, but you can move it left and right. You can move it up. You can move it down. And you do get this nice torso bend, which is kind of stiff, but it can move left and right like so. And there are some clearance issues because of these wide hips right here, but um, that's really not much of a bother overall. Um... Uh, yeah, you're not going to get as much movement out of it as you might with uh, some of the larger ceratopsians, just because of how wide the hips are. But um, it does have some nice, yeah, it does have some very, very nice movement, and you can get a lot of poses out of that. So, yeah. Yeah, absolutely one of the coolest ceratopsians. Now, in regards to who uh, Zuni Ceratops, it comes from the Moreno Hill Formation in New Mexico, which is an American state, not actually Mexico itself. A lot of people get confused over that, but I am clearing that up right now with this video. Uh, New Mexico is an American state in the USA. It is not uh, part of Mexico itself. So, yeah. But comes from the Moreno Hill Formation, and the Moreno Hill Formation is not very well understood at this point. There's only like five or six different dinosaurs that are known from the formation, including a dinosaur that is set to appear in the Tyrannosaur line and probably would have preyed on young Zuniceratops, called Suski Tyrannus. Um, yeah, Suski Tyrannus is a very small. Uh, Dinosaur it wouldn't have been a threat to an adult uh, Zuniceratops, and Zuniceratops is about the size of a cow. So, yeah, not much is going to threaten this animal. 
unless there were much larger predators in the Moreno Hill Formation. Uh, we do know that it lived alongside the Therizinosaur Nothronychus, which also appeared alongside Zuni Ceratops in the documentary When Dinosaurs Roamed America. And When Dinosaurs Roamed America is what really made Zuni Ceratops better known to the public because um, yeah, Zuni Ceratops had a starring role in one of the Cretaceous segments um, where they were attacked by a pack of raptors. Of course, there are no large raptors that are known from the Moreno Hill Formation, uh, so we don't exactly know what preyed upon Zuni Ceratops. It definitely um, had some sort of predator. We just haven't found it yet because um, the Moreno Hill Formation is not well understood. We do know that it also lived alongside some uh, species of hadrosaurs or duck-billed dinosaurs, but again, yeah, we don't yet have a predator uh, that we know of that would have been hunting this animal. So, yeah, there's a lot to be understood in regards to the, this dinosaur. Now, overall, um, Zuniceratops what is the cheapest of the um, Beasts of the Mesozoic figures. Um, I got this in pre-order for about $26. Um, it is probably closer to $30 now um, if you are to order it on creativebeast.com uh, since it is in stock there. But um, I do, I highly recommend this figure because um, if you really want um, a very vibrant colored uh, early Ceratopsian, uh, this is definitely the one to pick. Um, and it's absolutely he just a, a gorgeous figure. It won't break your wallet if you're strapped for cash. And yeah, it's just an amazing dinosaur figure to have with any collection. Yeah. Now, measurement wise, uh, this figure, as I've said again, as I've said, it's a um, it's the smallest of the beasts of the Mesozoic, and from tip of the horns to the end of the tail, it is about eight and a half inches, roughly, maybe eight and three, yeah, maybe eight and um, a, yeah, maybe even eight and a quarter overall. And height-wise, to the top of the, thr the frill, it is almost four inches. So, pretty good size. That's comparable to some of the larger uh, Carnegie dinosaur figures, which this does not compare to because, uh, in regards to quality, because this is much better quality figure than any of the Carnegie dinosaurs. I and I used to collect Carnegie dinosaurs, so... I, I know absolutely this thing is much better than they are, but it is also comparable to the um, high quality um, Papo um, dinosaur figures in the Ceratopsian family, uh, such as Pachyrhinosaurus and um, yeah Triceratops, um, in regard to si in regards to size, because. It's roughly about the same size as the smaller individuals in that toy line. But, um, yeah, this is much higher quality because of its articulation, its color scheme, and just the fact that it... Uh, yeah, it, it, it goes beyond anything that Papo has come out with. I mean, I love Papo, but, yeah, this is even superior quality uh, to any of those. <laughs> but, yeah, absolutely definitely a figure I recommend getting. <laughs> yeah, so this is Saber Rex signing out saying, you're never too old, old to play with toys. Be a toy nerd. Be proud of it. Hey, click like, hit subscribe, and um, yeah, if you want more content, and don't be, be afraid hey, to hit the bell icon for more because I will be doing another video next week. Yeah. yeah. So, see you later. Thank you.